It's a great time of year to be setting some goals for our practice and we're going to talk about some tools that you can use as well as some different ways that you can approach goal setting. Welcome to Adventures in Suzuki Parenting. I'm Jody St. Clair and today we're going to be talking about setting goals. First, before we start, I really want to hear all about the goals that you are setting already. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've been setting some goals for your year, some intentions, and what they are and how do you plan to kind of execute them. Uh, if you have some sort of reward set in place for when you reach those goals and how you kind of revisit them, I really would am interested in the ideas that you have, so please let me know. The first thing that we're going to go over is our large, overarching, big goals. These are the things that maybe motivated you when you started your lessons. Playing an instrument is really important for the culture of your family. I feel like music education is an integral part of a well-rounded education. My child was really interested in music and interested in that instrument. Those kinds of goals are the reasons that we start playing an instrument. Sometimes as you get going, these the reasons for playing change, and that's okay. But it's a nice time to really check in and see how have my reasons for doing this changed? How, do I need to change my reasons for doing this? Maybe it needs a little bit of revision. Maybe it's in a place where it just needs to be reimagined. Um, it's easy to kind of ignore those big reasons. When you start having struggles, it then is great to have a, gr a foundation of reasons to be able to rely on so that you know, you can go back, ah, oh, yes, I know this is really hard, but we want to do this because it's important to us. So just kind of defining the reasons that it's important to you. And I think it's just good to check in every year on those big goals. From there, we start thinking about a long-term goal, a large goal. This is where things like a 100-day practice challenge fits in, um, uh, or a even just kind of a uh, working towards going to a summer camp, or working towards an audition, something like that. I've used a lot of different tools for these larger goals over the years. I've done things like review chains, practice beads. The thing that we're doing this year is a sticker mosaic. These often have some sort of reward or a celebration tied to the, uh, when, when you feel like it's accomplished. As a teacher, I also use the end of the book as a, as a marker of a large goal. And we do a celebration recital where we get to celebrate all of the hard work that's gone in. It's really good as you're setting a large goal like this to have an idea of where you're going to end up. Are you gonna go ice skating when you finish this large goal? Are you going to take a nice family hike? There are lots of ideas um, to kind of incorporate uh, something fun that you can do as a family in celebrating the end of one of these big goals. I would love to hear if you've done a big goal like this and if what you kind of did to celebrate the end of it, how you kind of kept moving through it, what kept you motivated, because I think everybody needs some really good ideas on how to keep those large goals going. I already have a video up with different rewards and kind of these different tiers of what with different ideas of what you could use for these goals. So you can find the video link in the notes below. And there's also a printable with a lot of different um, kind of celebration and reward ideas for when you get to uh, a point where you're marking the accomplishment. If you don't feel ready to tackle a long-term goal, it's really good to start with a short-term goal. And the short-term goals are just kind of a part of the 
um, overall fabric of how we motivate ourselves in general. So as you're brainstorming, you really get your child involved, get your teacher involved about what what you're thinking you might want to do, um, but getting your child involved especially because if it's coming from them, they're just going to have more ownership over accomplishing that goal. So a small term goal would be, you know, a number of days practiced in a row or a number of days practiced in each week. Um, it could be a weekly goal. It could be a review goal. It could be, um, you know, kind of a number of times of doing something over a week. We do a lot. I'm sure your teacher is assigning a lot of short term goals, but you can also try to get your child involved in order to kind of come up with something that they have um, kind of a choice about, uh, depending on their age a little bit. But it, the, as soon as you can kind of involve them in those decisions, the more ownership they're going to have of playing their instrument. Again, even with the short-term goals, it's important to at least mark that they are accomplished. And with a short-term goal, it could be as simple as, wow, we did that, what a great accomplishment and just recognizing it but not letting not not recognizing it is really where kind of the danger it becomes unmotivating to do those short term goals so in order to kind of still keep that motivation it's really important to observe to celebrate to enjoy the process of going through this because we have to enjoy the process really in order to um, get a great product the Pro, this is a very process-oriented thing, learning an instrument. And the more that we can find the ways that our children are enjoying the process of learning, um, the more successful we'll be. Setting goals is a really key part of learning. And getting your kids involved in setting the goals is also really key to ha them having ownership. And I hope that um, you got some maybe some new ideas or maybe realized that you could organize your goals a little bit more um, while watching this video. If you liked the information that's been on here, it would help me so much if you like, and especially if you subscribe to the channel so that you continue to see and be alerted when new videos come out. It makes a big difference to me and every single like and subscribe means a lot. So um, if you take the time to do that, it's really helpful. And please check out any of the links below and I hope you have a great week of practicing.